Professor Vivek Shandas at Portland State studies something called urban heat islands. I work on trying to understand the stressors that climate change um, puts on cities and regions and potential solutions for those stressors that cities and regions face. For more than a decade, he's traveled around the city taking temperature measurements and seeing which areas get hotter. They've noticed patterns in which homes heat up the fastest. Sometimes you'll find buildings that are very low slung, like warehouse type buildings. Those tend to be directly exposed, like all of the walls, all of the roof, all of that surrounding parking lot is continuously absorbing that. And so you see this real amplifying effect from the uh, sun in and around those very low slung buildings. Also, if your building has a big parking lot nearby or you live next to a big road, your home is going to get hotter than others. Most asphalt, as you might see, is on roadways and parking lots. It's black, it's dense, it absorbs heat, it's often very exposed to the sun. So it's absorbing heat all day long and holds on, retains to that heat. And then as the nighttime temperature cools, it tries to let go. It essentially moves that hot air from that hot asphalt into the ambient environment. And before it can often let go of all of that temperature, whether it's a building or an asphalt road or a parking lot, the sun comes up again and reheats it. So you see this amplifying effect in areas that have a lot of um, large open exposed black parking lots as well as large freeway complexes and uh, roadway structures in and around a city. And as you probably know, heat rises. So if you live high up in a high rise building, you're going to feel it worse than your neighbors on the ground floor. Often what we end up seeing is apartments in the upper floors of a building are 15, 20, 30 degrees, sometimes hotter than the bottom floors of that structure. On hot days, downtown Portland starts out among the warmest. But as the day goes on, the east side of the city sees the hottest temperatures. You know, any freeway that we have in the region, like I-5, 205, 84, 26, even bigger boulevards like Sandy or, um, or Powell Boulevard or Foster, like these are areas that just are very exposed, very low slung buildings. And what we see is that uh, solar radiation really affecting those particular corridors very intensely. The west side of the city does better, in part because there's a lot more shade. Trees in natural areas keep the areas around them a lot cooler. Dr. Shondas thinks it's time we start considering these factors and heat as we continue to develop the city of Portland. It would be um, really a model for the entire country if the Portland metro region could create a set of building codes that would actually be heat mitigating building codes. So whether it be coloring, whether it be specific types of materials, whether it be um, as a certain geometry or orientation that would allow us to reduce those uh, um, temperatures and actually ameliorate some of that heat.